This is going to be a brief introduction to the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. First, we want to meet the players. Up here, we have Clausius. He was a German fellow. And his colleague down here is Clapeyron, a French fellow. They work together as mathematicians and physicists to develop the all-important equation that you see up here, better known as the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. So what can we do with this equation? Why? as always, do we care? Well, it is in fact interesting to relate temperature to vapor pressure, and it's also quite interesting to be able to calculate the delta heat of vaporization of a given substance. If we're going to do such a thing, we actually are gonna to have to rearrange this equation so that we solve for the variable of interest. Now, you can do other things beyond solve for the delta heat of vaporization, but that's one of the most common things to do. Now, as we have already seen, uh, we have relationships between temperature and pressure in phase changes. In particular, we know that with increasing temperature, we increase kinetic, ener kinetic energy of our substance, of the molecules of our substance. This in turn leads to an increase in vapor pressure. And if we were to plot those two variables on a graph, we would find that we have an exponential or nonlinear curve. So if we want to do some calculations, calculations exploring temperature and vapor pressure, we would be much better off with a linear equation. So Clausius and Clapeyron derived an equation where if you plot the natural log of the vapor pressure against one over the temperature, you will get a linear graph. As you know, for any linear graph, y equals mx plus b. And we end up getting a graph that looks like this. Uh, it has a negative slope. We have one over t on the x-axis and the natural log of the pressure on the y-axis. Um, this is much more useful for doing calculations that relate temperature and pressure. And in particular, it just so happens that the slope of this graph is equal to the negative heat of the vaporization of the substance over R, the gas constant. So now we're gonna put this equation to work. By doing what else? By doing a problem. We have a problem here, and it's asking us to solve for the delta heat of vaporization. Don't say you weren't warned. Now we have a number of variables. We have a pressure one, a temperature one, a pressure two, a temperature two, and since we are good citizens, good chemistry citizens, we are going to write all these variables down. Why? They're sitting there in the problem. Because if you don't want to screw this problem up, you're going to write down your variables because you're going to keep good track of them and you're not going to lose needless points by making a mistake when you put these numbers in your formula. Okay, now we have to contemplate R. What form of R are we going to use? Well, again, we're solving for delta heat of vaporization. So guess what? Joules are our friend here. We must have an answer in joules or kilojoules. So this is the form of the gas constant that we need. Okay, now next up is rearranging this equation to solve for the delta heat of vaporization. Not as bad as it looks. We're simply gonna take the negative R and we're gonna move it to the numerator over here. And then we're gonna take this whole mess over here, one over T2 over one, 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1, and we're going to put it in the denominator over here. What's that going to give us? That is going to give us the equation in the form delta H of vaporization equals ln of p2 over p1 divided by 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1 times negative r, our gas constant. 
So if we plunk all these numbers in, what do we have? We have equals ln of our P2 is 135 tor. Our P1 is 24.3 tor. The tor cancels, so I'm actually not going to write down the units. It doesn't matter. And we're going to divide this by 1 over T1 is 270. Oh, T2 rather, see? See how easy it is to make a mistake? T2, which is 325K minus 1 over 273K times 8.314 joule per mole dot Kelvin. Well, it's going to cancel. Kelvin's going to cancel. So we can cancel that out and know that we are going to be left with an answer that is in joule per mole. Okay, now um, you're on your own with your calculator on this one. I did it and I got an answer in joules of, let's see here, just looking it up, of 24,325 uh, Oops, 325 joule, which I will put into kilojoules. 24.3 kilojoules is equal to the delta heat of vaporization. Up, up, up. I'm having trouble with my writing here. Equals the delta heat of vaporization. Yay, we did it. Keep in mind that there's lots of variations on this problem. So go forth and practice so you can be ultra expert on Clausius Clapeyron calculations.